MMA Roadshow, episode number 223. My name is John Morgan. Cold Coffee is with me at the Casa de Cold Coffee. Mm. And my man Simon Head making a quick return to the show, but this time in the flesh and blood. Oh, yeah. What's up, guys? It was, we're here for UFC 239, uh, a big fight card, international fight. We kind of crazy, right? International fight week is normally like two, three cards. It's madness. And there's certainly a lot going on because there's a lot of big fights. But uh, I don't know. It's it's not as internationally fight weeky feely to me this week. We spoke in the car, John, and I I did sort of preface it by saying this is probably going to jinx the whole week. Yes, that was terrible. <laughs> and touch wood, nothing's happened yet. Although weigh-ins are tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Um, Keep saying all the right words. Oh yeah, just <laughs> caveats and all sorts. Of, just but throwing them all it's out been, there. It's been it's been remarkably incident-free so far. Yeah. Um, we've got the one show. Uh, we've had no. High-profile uh, pullouts. We've had no failed drug tests. We've had no uh, shoving matches at the yeah. at the face-offs. Everything has been so far plain sailing. And uh, as we've spoken about on this podcast uh, in the past, I have declared this week previously to be cursed. cursed. Yep. Touch wood, we've been good so far. Um, it's been relatively plain sailing, and. Uh, Fingers crossed everybody makes it through weigh-in day in one piece. It's definitely, I mean, listen, it, and I don't want to belittle the card itself. It d- definitely has the feel of a big card. I guess it's just used to, it seems like every international fight week as the past few years has been chaotic. And uh, as you said, hopefully we don't get any last-second problems, but it's been smooth, smooth sailing so far. All right, listen, before we get into that card, I do want to ask you real quick, because we have to touch on it. You, over the weekend, before you came over here, were at Cage Warriors 106. Yeah. Uh, and, and we don't spend a lot of time talking about European regional MMA, but for anybody that hasn't gone and checked this fight out, it is on Fight Pass. If you want to see highlights of it, it is on UFC Fights Past. Or not to UFC Fights Past, just Fights, Fights Past. Past. Yes, the <laughs> title of which Cold Coffee absolutely hates, but it was all I it's, could It's a tongue twister. It, it was all I could come up with at the time. But anyway, the highlights are on there if you want to check it out. But uh, the main event there... Truly one of the craziest fights I've ever seen. If, if you haven't seen it yet, one of the wildest innings, one of the bloodiest fights. Uh, Nicholas Dalby, Ross Houston, get, just give us the thoughts of, of being there for what was crazy. A fight that was ultimately waved off because there was too much blood on the canvas for these two men to safely compete. If Yeah, anybody of a, of a, a slightly squeamish or nervous disposition should probably sort of fast forward over this bit. Because <laughs> I didn't think about it that. Was like a, it, was like, it was like a scene from a slasher movie. I mean, the, the, it, was, it was a hell of a fight. All night we had yeah. some amazing fights. It was Cage Warriors Night of Champions. They stacked the deck with six title fights. They couldn't fit them all on one main card so that the headline preview, uh, sorry, prelim fight was also a title fight. It was six title fights at the top of the card. All six fights delivered something spectacular in one way or another, and we, you know, we wondered what the the main event, Nick Dalby versus Ross Houston, would serve up for us. We did, we did not expect what we got. It turned into an absolute, absolute mess. Is what it turned yeah. into. Um, Dalby got cut really badly just above his his left temple. Yeah. Um, it was a really bad cut. Nasty. It, it was, was a wild. really bad cut, and I I thought they were going to wave it off in between rounds but they let the cut man do his job and he performed miracles to shut that cut uh, and give him a chance to go out for the second round but Dalby knew that he couldn't hang around for another four rounds with that cut so he went like a berserker into round two hit Ross Houston with a perfect right cross that that broke Houston's nose at which point you've got these two guys who are basically just bleeding profusely all over the cage (coughs) it turned into a a bit of a farcical situation by the end like they've got this uh Canvas, once once it got the blood all over it, they couldn't keep their feet. They were right. slipping and sliding and falling over. And um, you could hear Mark Goddard, the referee on the on, on, on the uh, on the live mic, basically at one point he just went, this is ridiculous. <laughs> it was great. And, it was and, a great moment. Yeah, he said it's that. a hot yeah. mic and he's just like, this is ridiculous. And, and uh, <laughs> That's at, one, bad. at one point he just stopped the fight and you could see the two fighters looking at him going, we're both Why right. are we stopping? I didn't do anything illegal. We're both good to go. But you're right. It, it, you, used, you actually used the terms in describing what I thought. It looked like they were playing slip and slide, which yes. is absolutely yeah. Disgusting when you think that they're slipping, sliding in their own blood. It was <laughs> for it our was, amusement. It was it was it, it was, was such our amusement. Yeah, we throw that in. It's really bad. And it was really bad. I mean, I mean, what I would say is it was such a it was such a freak night in terms of what what occurred in that fight. It was it was ruled a, a no contest. It, God, I'd stop the fight. Just want to say. He did it absolutely right. Well, I wanted he to highlight that. I think he nailed it. You know, he, he there really was some, did. There was some criticism over how he handled it. Like some people, 
I think they criticize Mart because I think he is more vocal than maybe they would like, or he he, he talks a little bit more, or he's mm. more involved. But I thought he hit it spot on. I mean, yeah. like he tried to let them compete. You know, at one point he said, "Look, I'm going to give it to the end of this round." Which, because it ended early in the third round, this ended up being a no contest. It didn't go to the judges, which to me is almost, I think, more fair. I guess it's just just it, no one loses a belt, right? That's right. No one loses because Dalby had the interim belt. Houston had the had the full belt, right? And they were supposed to be unifying the titles, right? And Obviously, none of that story got completed. Um, but I thought, you know, I, so I think it's good. Yeah, neither one of these guys deserved to lose, but I thought he handled it. I, I, th- I think Mark deserves credit because, yeah. it was, as you said, you used the word farcical. I mean, it was getting to a point where they were trying to get back to their feet, and they couldn't. They were just slipping and sliding. So I thought Mark handled it perfectly. You know, I, I don't, I don't imagine, to be honest with you, there's any exact rule. I mean, I've read, the, I've read through the unified rules. I don't recall anything that directly talked about the blood-soaked surface. You know, uh, so I, you know, but I think he made a, a, a right decision and just that it was no longer a safe environment for these guys to yeah, compete. Yeah. And in order to make sure that you know everything is safe, we just got to call this off. So I think kudos to him. And I do say um, this brings us probably, and it's not an attack on Cage Warriors. They're not the only organization in the world that uses these vinyl canvases. But I, I, I understand this is the most extreme example I've ever seen of it. Yeah. But this really does point out to me that, listen, those vinyl canvases are not great for competition, man. I mean, this again, this was an extreme example, but you get some some water on there, even some humidity if you're in a really, really humid place and it's just kind of building up on the mat and, and you're slipping a little bit. Even if it's you slip on a kick or you, or you move in a position and you end up losing a position, I just – I, I, I imagine it's a cost issue for a lot of people as to why they can't. You know, we were talking to some people at the World MMA Awards the other night, that, that uh, some promoters behind the scenes, and they were saying, you know, it's not that there's a huge difference in cost. The difference is the vinyl, you can sanitize it, you know, clean it up and reuse it. The yeah. canvas, that blood is stained in there. It's soaked in there, you know, and, and you can paint over it on the night of, but you, you can't go use that canvas again. No, I think – and it's not, it's not a slight on what Cage Warriors are doing. I all. mean, you know, they've – They've been running the setup that they've had for years, and we've never seen a, a, an occurrence like this before. Right. Um, and you know, I was talking to some people backstage after the event and saying it was a freak occurrence. Um, and I think the best the best way to approach this is to look at how it, how the incident was handled. And I thought it was handled perfectly. Um, it was an imperfect situation, but it was handled perfectly by the people involved. And uh, I know Graham Boyle and the promoter uh, was 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 equally full of praise uh, for, for how Mark Goddard handled the situation um, and he was in full agreement with with, with what happened and, and uh, you know Borlan went on and said uh, you know they deserve to obviously have a rematch and he said he would love nothing more for them to, to get that rematch at UFC Copenhagen which if had Dalby won that fight that would have been the natural next step for him potentially to have earned his spot back in the UFC with the U- with the UFC going to Copenhagen for the first time ever. It's his hometown. It would yeah. have been perfect. So that was a narrative going in. That might still happen. Who knows? I mean, Houston is still undefeated now. Um, could, I mean, they could, so the UFC who knows? could take both of them. It is weird, though. Can you imagine them using that footage to promote the fight, though? I mean, it's some of the most disturbing <laughs> footage. Like you said, it looked like a slasher film. It was, it, was, it, was, it was quite the night. It was on the hottest day of the year in the UK as well. I was stuck in a catering block watching it and just oh. slowly sweating into my clothes. Crazy. It was horrible. All right. I had to make mention of that because it is, out of all the thousands and thousands and thousands of fights I've ever seen, it is the first fight I've ever seen waved off because of too much blood on the canvas Madness. so it, yeah. it was bizarre all right let's talk about the reason we're here this week the reason you're town pretty cool actually should say uh you were coming over anyway you're, you're doing some stuff for other people as well as us you were going to be here anyway before you joined the mma junkie team uh now you're here there and it is i was going to say this fans. is this is the first time he's been on the show since you've been uh an official junkie member in person yeah. that's right in person you know so you are the the international to international fight week. You bring the flavor, so we are <laughs> glad to have you here. I'm feeling the love in the room, you know. Uh, but no, it's good. Glad to have you. But no, it's funny. It it's uh, I know, uh, and I don't want to go too long because we have a plenty of fight stuff. But I know a long time ago when I first met you and you talked about trying to, uh, you wanted to come aboard on the junkie team, and uh, now it's it's all come full circle. Here we are doing the same shit we've done in bars across the country, but now you actually are part of the team so welcome to the team i appreciate it glad that, to have wow, you it's getting, I'm getting a little emotional in here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's the it's air getting, conditioning it's i just gotta fix yeah, <laughs> no i'll tell you you know listen uh man i i was uh you know the world mma awards let me just say quick the world mma awards we, we didn't win best media source god dang it i've got a 
Well, anyway, frustrated. I was ho- I was I was hoping for one reason um, to be able to th- that we did win, and that was because I wanted to kind of get up and and give one last thanks to Dan Stupp for everything that he had done because technically he was still a part of um, you know our coverage for a lot of that year because the, yeah. the the awards were for media year t- 2018, and it would have been nice to get up and just you know hey say Dan, you know even though Dan's moved on to different things yeah you know thank you uh, of course you know Ben and Fernando would have been a, a piece of this as well they've moved on as well happy for them. Mm-hmm. Um, that they got their new opportunity, but I gotta say, you know, the, the trio that we've got on board now don't wanna don't wanna don't wanna pump ourselves up too much, man. But but with you, with with uh, Nolan King, with Farah Hanun, uh, man, fantastic, uh, fantastic additions to the MMA yeah. Junkie team. I hope everybody feels that way. Well, I mean, especially with fighting, has to be happy for Jose. His his uh, contributions to get that award last night, he was very very happy for Massive. himself. Massive. So, uh, they picked up a good move, and we picked up some good shots shit, fired. So we'll shots fired. <laughs> wow. No, I'm just kidding. I like Kenny's Jose. Kenny's coming out swinging, boy. Yeah, I've been knows. swinging about that fucking popularity contest for a week. You know? <laughs> Fighters not, not at work can suck my well, dick. Wow, not <laughs> salty It's funny at all. you should say that. Uh, behind the scenes, um, myself and uh, a friend of John's, who will be known only as Tony, um, <laughs> um had managed to managed to get ourselves an audience with the the owner of Fighters Only, where Tony gave an impassioned speech. Is the only way I could describe it, and I kind of chipped in with a few a few sort of suitable pointers. But basically, Tony was off, and basically explaining why the voting system was flawed. And he was, I he was laying in, man. And I I, I I I was trying to sort of put some positive spin on some of it, <laughs> but no, I mean like in all seriousness. The awards are all great, and it's great that they're fan voted, and that's yeah, yeah. Gra- that's all fine. I made two suggestions to him, and he liked the sound of both of them. So whether any of them ever see the light of day, who knows? One of them is to have a fighter's fighter of the year. So what happens is the fighters vote for their fighter of the year. Right. It happens in 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 the uh, Premier League in England, a player's player of the year because all the players are uh, in a union called the PFA. Well, and, there's and your that, first problem. Well, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thorny subject, we'll move on. But no, but yeah, so so they all vote. And I th- I thought it wouldn't be a terrible idea for either the fighters to vote for their media source of the year or for the media themselves because everybody in this business knows who's good, who's legit, and who isn't, right? right? And to have an award where you're voted for by your peers pretty cool. is also pretty cool. So maybe, you you know, you have, you have a, a media... A media voted media source or media personality of the year, but you can't vote for someone from your own outlet. Well, that, say, well that, that means what the you whole have MMA JA was going to do. I just don't really see that there's even a needed point to have media outlets or journalists even involved with the fighters' awards. I mean, yeah, we're, we're yeah. part of it or whatever, but the nights for them, it's just a giant fucking popularity contest. <laughs> it is. It makes no se- it makes no sense why uh, that. The, even the journalists and the whole media is even a part of it. I mean, it, 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 it seems to me like it was brought in as filler because they couldn't find enough stuff to fill a full night. So they're like, well, let's do this, let's do, do this. Do you want to know why they've done it? And I don't know this for a fact, but I'm pretty sure this is why they did it. Because if you've got a media source of the year, those media sources are going to start husting for votes. And That's it's it. going to then get, the it then get, it then gets coverage. Yeah, it's it then gets coverage. So it, and then they're I'm like, sure please, come system. cover our show Well, I still as well. like winning, even if it's... Well, it is. It it's is fun. what it is, man. I mean, you but know. it's like I, that's why I like the idea of the, like the whole MMA JA. You know, where it's like I can give two shits if I'm popular or not popular, but I appreciate it when my peers come say, Recognize "I appreciate it. your grind." Right. I like this. I like that. Then I'm like, okay, that's cool. Or they'll bust my balls. I'm like this. This is iffy. This whatever. But mm. those are the people I care about. Or if my family says something, you know, yeah. the random guy that. At one second says you're a piece of shit, but then wants to take a picture with you after. Fuck you! I don't give a. I don't care. <laughs> wow. You know, Kenny is in spite cold to them this today. But that's what I mean. I I just I hate the whole fucking idea. That's why I yeah. won't mark my words now unless something happens. You will never fucking see me present at that wow. award show. <laughs> lying, lying it down. Shots so. fired all around. And today. now I hear certain people that are involved with it. It's even more of a shit show. Uh, Shots fired. <laughs> what I would say. What I would and, say. But I did oh, want to say. I think the people. Well, I, I uh, if you wanted talk. some more clarification <laughs> or something, I would love to see. The people that are behind who's uh, nominating, putting these people up. I understand it's fan voted, but I don't know who the people are that are picking these things. Because some of the, some of the fucking choices make no fucking sense in the world. How Dan so Hardy I was would, nominated for Analyst of the Year is beyond I mean, there's a ton of people. On that, short I mean, there's a ton of, you know, people are talking about Ford or MMA, all this other shit. There should be yeah. some people that can go back and say, okay, 
I get it, you know, once it gets to this point, but nobody's having a, a, a let's have a discussion of how it, if this wants to be a reputable sort of thing that people want to look forward to, let's have some real dialogue about how the the choices get put up there and talk about who's making these choices. Are there their own little ulterior motives of why certain people are put up there and others because some just leave your just leaves your head scratching. That's just like it, I just can't wrap my head around it, so I think I'm just so sort of put off by the yeah. whole the whole fucking entity because it just seems like a giant circle jerk uh, and I fucking hate circle jerks unless I'm involved <laughs> personally I love that you, if you just stop there wow. everyone would be fine and you went, unless I'm involved you just buried your own argument uh. but yeah one thing I would say and you know obviously everyone's doing their job and everyone's trying to do the best they can and yeah there's, 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 there's friendly rivalries between outlets what I would like to say is uh, for, for people like Casey and Esther who have been in MMA fighting and there's been all sorts of changes and shit happening right. with their outlet mm-hmm. um, uh, I, I, was, I was pleased for the pair of them because, sure. because they do excellent work right. and, and they are the mainstays of that brand right now yeah. right. And, and without those two they'd be lost right and, and so, I agree so with you. They, they fully deserve the credit that they get right I agree with you on that point and, and I'm happy for them I guess I'm happy for anybody that cares about that shit and I felt bad because I, I was busting John's balls about it so I apologize because I know you wanted to, to win it oh, yeah. the whole time while I thought it was a, it was a fucking shit show <laughs> really? but I do realize and I am happy for the people that do uh, want that sort of stuff like for whatever reasons um, so I'm happy for them for the people that that are happy for it and are striving for those I am happy that, that the winners got it or whatever I'm not like bashing the fact that if you take joy in it, I don't want to steal your joy from getting this thing. But yeah. you know, ultimately, I, it, it just feels like fucking a bad high school like yearbook. Like who got the most whatever popular vote at the end of the year? And when it's all said and done, it doesn't mean shit when it goes beyond high school. And that's what I sort of equate. Cold thing coffee to. is fired up tonight, I man. Know, I, which I say that even though I was voted best dancer and most cheerful in high school, <laughs> most, most cheerful. cheerful. You believe that? <laughs> Shit's <laughs> come a long what? way since then. You cannot write oh, comedy like this. Yeah. That <laughs> shit's, shit's, too great. shit's went All right, really well, far listen, since then. Uh, <laughs> enough about the World MMA Awards. And I guess we'll move on. Hopefully we get an invitation next year. I think I think oh, Coke Coffee we, might have I, just ruined I, our I, nomination. Oh, yeah. I still say, let's just fucking, why? Let's just snub them. <laughs> let's just not go. All right. We could just, you apparently we don't have to go. You can get awards and you could just stay in whatever fucking remote office oh. and just tape your videos. How many people fucking tape their acceptance speeches? It's a fucking joke. But whatever. Enough of that. UFC 239 <laughs> goes down this weekend. In the main event, it is John Jones versus Tiago Santos. Uh, all right, guys. I want to talk about this fight. Just you know, having, having a chance to observe these two guys up close. Um, I got to see him last week in L.A. as well. And, then, of course, we all got to see him over the last couple of days here in Vegas. Listen, you, you, don't, you don't go into a John Jones fight going, who you picking? We all know everybody's picking John Jones. But I will say this. I do like the skills that, that Mahetta is bringing to the table. I, I, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I don't think there's uh, a man alive uh, at light heavyweight or lower. Maybe heavyweight change things, but they can out-technique John Jones. They can beat John Jones over the course of 25 minutes. I, I just don't see that happen. I don't see anybody taking a decision from him. I don't see. I, I just don't see. I think if you beat John Jones, I think you have to clip him. I think that's why people wanted to see the Anthony Johnson fight so much, and I feel like um, maybe this isn't a bad, you know. Uh, replica of, of Rumble Johnson. I don't mean to take away from Tiago Santos by saying he's not his own fighter, you know, but that kind of guy that is uh, maybe a little bit wild at times, uh, but, you know, sometimes that wildness can play into in, into his, uh, you know, into his favor and has that kind of one-punch knockout ability. So I'll be honest, I'm, 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 I'm picking John Jones here. I mean, you don't pick against John Jones, but I am, I would say, in, in no disrespect to Alexander Gustin or Anthony Smith, but I think probably more intrigued by this fight than I was by either of those because I feel like there's a possibility there. And I also do feel like Tiago Santos is not the kind of guy that is going to wilt under the bright lights or that is going to come out flat on that eye. And I may be proved wrong, but just knowing the type of attitude that he has right now, just being around him, um, I, I feel like he's going to be able to deliver on fight night and give you know a good version of himself. Meanwhile, John is – about as relaxed as I've ever seen him. I mean, maybe there's, maybe it's because there's no drama around this one. I mean, that that's that's, you know, there always seems to be some drama, right? And this isn't 
a, a drama-filled week, as you said. It's just a fist fight. But, man, he's joking, laughing. You guys were scrumming with him today, and he's – Messing around with reporters and stuff. I mean, it, 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 give me your take on what you guys on, on what you guys see and what you think of the fight. Yeah, I mean, Jones is super relaxed. Like, I think when he ran up onto the stage at the open workouts, his first thing, he's sort of like, "Hi, everyone! I made it to another fight night." <laughs> right? It was, right, that's right. <laughs> it was like sort of joking about his past, his past uh, issues, and some sometimes not always getting to fight night. But yeah, he, he was super relaxed during the open workouts. He was super relaxed today at media day. Um, as yeah, I mean, like some of the shenanigans going on in the scrum were ridiculous, and he he was lapping it all up. We had two reporters engaging in a spot of thumb war, in a row over who would ask the next question. <laughs> this act this actually happened, what? um, and John basically <laughs> officiated a thumb war battle. I'm standing there thinking, what the hell is going on? And then we had a and then we had a a fashion a fashion war between Gareth A. Davis and Aaron Bronstetter. Uh, where shots were fired in both directions uh, from the pair. It was what? It was. It was ridiculous. It was, the whole th- <laughs> and, then, and then Gareth going into a thirty-second intro of how him and John spent some time together in, in a car in, in a car before <laughs> he could talk about some it other was, thing. It was. So this, it was, this is an all-star scrum. So this thing the is scrum up will be on MMA Junkie. junkie right? yeah. It's yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't, it, it, yeah. I just. It was, <laughs> I came away from the scrum feeling really frustrated because we didn't get as much out of James as I wanted to. What we got was just a whole load of weirdness and a few good answers. So, but that aside, Jones is in Jones is in peak form. He he seems super relaxed going into this. Um, really interested by what he said at the open workouts, where he basically said anybody could knock me out. Yeah, anybody could knock me out. He said you could knock him out, right. John. He, he actually quoted you. You asked the question, yeah. right? Um, and. Uh, he said, the trick is you've got to have the skill to land the punch. And nobody has been able to have that skill yet. And he didn't see that changing on Saturday night. However, you, t- you, t- you take the flip side of that. Nobody has ever really gone headlong at John Jones. Right. Really. Uh, and normally in a, in, a, in a fist fight, going headlong at someone isn't always the best thing to do. But I think the worst thing you could do with Jones is let the man settle. That's once it. he Once he gets into his rhythm, he's really hard to get out of his rhythm. So I think... Tiago needs to be a disruptor. He needs to begin there in his face. And from what I can make out, and I'm no fight tactician here, but I think he needs to be hammering Jones with low low leg kicks and he needs to be throwing big shots over the top. And and because if you can clip him, then you've got your opening. Right. Because as he said, he said he thinks that Tiago has, has bulked up for this fight and that after two rounds, that's going to start to count against him. Jones is going to wear on him when he's wrestling over time and, and uh, that explosiveness will start to wane. So I think there's a window there for Thiago. Early. And I think it's all about two things for him. One, is he confident in his own mind that John won't knock him out? And if he is, then the door's open for him to just go marauding in and do what he tr- needs to try and do. Because I think if he tries to stand off and work openings, and I think that's not going to... Realistically, I don't think that's going to work for him. I think Jones will settle into his rhythm and beat him. So, But he does have a chance. And I think you said in, in, in the media scrum with him that there are people who think he has the skills to give Jones problems. And I agree with that. Yeah. That's the thing. is, that I've been kind of interested in talking to Tiago this week. Now, obviously, Alex Davis is there translating. I mean, it's, yeah. it's English, Portuguese, and that sort of thing. And I think you always lose probably a little bit. But I've been really like intrigued by the psyche of what Maheta should bring in there. Um, because, I, I mean, I do like the concept of, hey, just another fight for me. I'm calm. I'm cool. This is, you know, but it's not. It's John Jones. You know what I mean? And and, and and you never probably want to admit that or tip your hand ahead of time. But, like, as you said, I think what happens is people are like, hey, this is a title fight, but I don't need to rush anything. I don't, you know, I don't I don't need to go crazy because John's dangerous and i got to be aware of that. And, and so people then all of a sudden, now you're set up at range with John Jones and you're letting him settle in and you're letting him find his rhythm. And, and you said it, disruption, man. I, to me – I, again, I, now I'm not the one that has to go in there and charge right at John Jones. You know, it's easy for me, isn't it? Yeah, so that's great. But to me, I don't know. That's that's what I think you you want to see. Not that John isn't ready to slip and counter and move, and and, and as soon as you get close, he's going to clinch you and try to wrestle. But I do feel like aggression and messing up his rhythm that is key. And so you can't just think, hey, well, it's just another fight. You know, just another night. I got to be calm. I got to be patient. I don't think you do. I think you got to go. You really do. And I think if you look at the fight where, or the fight where John had his biggest biggest trouble was against uh, Alex Gustafsson. Gus hit him with a load of low leg kicks in that fight and he pushed the pace on him. Yeah. Fighters don't normally do that. Anthony Smith had the right fight game to go in there and do that 
and for whatever reason, and I'm sure he, you know, he'll be more more well, able to explain. Himself ever since. Yeah, like he his fighting style was tailor made to try and pose those sort of problems, and for whatever reason on the night he wasn't able to employ that, and I'm sure he's kicking himself about that now. Yeah. But I think someone like Maheta, he's he's got that little bit of killer instinct about him, that little bit of uh, a little bit of extra aggression that he went through his career sort of producing these sorts of performances. Ironically, his last performance against Jan Blachowicz, he was a lot more reserved. He waited his moment, he picked his time, and then bang, he got the finish. But I don't think he can afford to do that against Jones. And I'm not saying that if he does that, he will win. Right. You know, Jones is still the the greatest fighter on the planet. Yep. So he may still be able to slip, move. He might even catch him with a counter shot and rock him himself. So we just don't know. But all I'm saying is, I think that is, from my from my perspective, that is the route to victory for Thiago if he's going to get it. I agree. All right. Well, listen, you got to go with John Jones, but I am, I, I got to admit, I'm pretty, uh, pretty intrigued by this fight. The co main event has a little bit of the same flavor for me, right? Manda Nunes versus Holly Holm. You know, I, I think quite possibly we're looking at the male goat and the female goat on the same card on the yep. same night, which is, which is pretty freaking cool, right? Um, and after what Amanda Nunes did to Chris Cyborg last time out, I, I don't know how you pick against her either, man. It just seems like she's clicking on all cylinders. Speaking of the World MMA Awards, the Ken so, uh, Kokafi over here is so, uh, a loves, fan. yeah, big fan of. She took home three big awards. Uh, what, knockout of the year, uh, upset of the year, and female fighter of the year. I mean, just amazing stuff. Like, she is in peak form right now. And Holly um, is 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 talented, right? And, but I, it just Amanda seems like on a different level right now. So I do I did go with Amanda Nunes in the pick. And I don't think that's, you know, like, oh, wow, you, you did. So, you know, you went with Amanda Nunes. But – I'm also intrigued by what Holly brings to the table, right? I think the stylistic matchup, the fact that Holly, while I don't think she has the same power to just stand toe-to-toe and trade in the pocket and let's see what happens, that's not her style to do anyway. It's all about movement and pace and countering. She's not afraid to wrestle if she has to. I don't know if that'll work or not, but at least she's got another option versus just, hey, i got to stand and trade with this devastating knockout artist in Amanda Nunes. But, and, and I should say, too, that I think Amanda has addressed her pace and cardio issues and that sort of thing that used to like really plague her. I think yeah. she's you know improved over that, but at the same time, um, those are still I think th- the concerns. I mean, I I don't think you want to go let's go get in a firefight with Amanda Nunes, um, but I I do like what Holly brings to the table, and I'm and she does have a penchant for shocking the world, right? Absolutely, and I think the thing I find really interesting there are a few little wrinkles to this fight that I find really interesting. Number one. If you look back over Amanda Nunes' recent career, the fighter who gave her the most trouble was Valentina Shevchenko. Right. I still maintain to this day that Valentina beat her. Right? It was a super close fight. Uh, Amanda got the nod. Um, but Valentina is a technical striker. Yes. Excellent footwork. Technical striker. Counters superbly. Yes. That's Holly Holm. Right. Holly Holm can do the same employ, a very similar uh, skill set. Absolutely. Um, and I think... And I asked Amanda about this at Media Day today, and she sort of referenced the fact that she's going to use the experience of her fights with Shevchenko for this particular fight. Because she, when she fought Ronda Rousey, obviously Ronda Rousey had a style all, all of her own. But when she fought Chris Cyborg, she's fighting a, an all-out power striker who just marauds forward and throws big shots. So you, you have no problem looking for your target. It's right in your face. Right. Holly's not going to be right in her face. Right. Holly's going to be dancing around, moving, pivoting, giving giving her different angles, looking to catch her with kicks as she moves to the side, trying to counter her on the on the way in and out. I think that's going to be really interesting to see how Amanda can adapt her very aggressive come forward style against a really slick counter striker who fights really really well off the back foot. Yep. It may be that Amanda's style is tailor made for Holly home because. A counter striker wants someone to come onto them, so there's that aspect to it as well. You look at the recent form; Amanda's the pick, of right? And I've picked Amanda, right? But I think that I, I I think that Holly is not as big of an underdog as perhaps she's being painted to be. The other thing in this fight, which hasn't really I haven't really heard anyone else talking about this, is Amanda's moving back down to 135, right? And Amanda is, I think, at her optimal weight class at 145. I think it's it's a much tougher job for her to get down. I mean, Holly's Holly's a big 35er as well. Right. But getting down to 135, 
Are we going to see the same explosiveness? Are we going to see the same power? How's the cardio Fair going point. to go when you're being led a merry dance around the octagon, potentially by Holly, who's not going to present a standing target at any point? Right. So that might be part of the Jackson Wink game plan as well. Run the legs out of her in the first couple of rounds. They know she has had cardio issues in the past. That's it. And she's moving down a weight That's class. It. So there's a few little, a few little narratives in there that we might see play out on fight night that perhaps aren't necessarily at the top of the uh, at the top of the keys to victory list right now. So completely agree with that. I tell you, it's funny, uh, small little minor detail, but at the open workouts, and I did think about this. The open workouts, Amanda, you know, she did come in and put in a workout. Yes. And then before she did her interviews, you notice they got her fully back into sweats. Every, I mean, they got. I yeah. think she was. I mean, she was. Even though that's just a display for fans, she was working. out. I think she was. Yeah, working out and using it to start out. getting that that extra weight off. Mm. So so we'll see. I, I I like I said, both these title fights. I think it's easy to just look at and go, well, goat and goat instant wins mm. but i think the way these you know the, the whole cliche of styles make fights right I, yep. I to me i'm intrigued by both these fights um and i had talked to holly last week a little bit about the fight itself and you know she was quick to point out uh you know because you look at what amanda did to cyborg versus what she did to cyborg you know it's like look man these are different fights you know you talk to Shevchenko, i mean it's, it's, the way they all work together, it's crazy. She's Apples like, and oranges. That's right. She's yeah. like, you can't put them together. These are different fights. But today I had a chance to speak to her again, and this time I wanted to talk to her uh, a little bit about just kind of Jackson Wink because Jackson Wink has been in the headlines, right? I mean, the, the, again, the, the the two fighters in the uh, in the main event, Jones and Holm, both train out of there. And, of course, we found out last week that Diego Sanchez left, and he kind of took a little shots on the way out. Respectful. I mean, he said, listen, I got all the love for him, mm. but I didn't feel like they were – give me the attention that I had. And this is not the first time that we've heard that, right? I and mean, we've heard similar complaints before. So um, I had a chance to ask Holly about that. And uh, she got pretty she got pretty passionate, I think. And I think she was incredibly well-spoken in uh, in what she said. But you could tell um, the emotions were real. So uh, here, here's what Holly Holm had to say. I wonder, I mean, we also had a high-profile departure, right? We found out last week that Diego's not there anymore. And he kind of took some parting shots, I guess, that some other people have taken as well. Is there any kind of, I don't know, sense of pride on the line? Like, we want to go out and show the world, like, you know, Jackson Wink still is, is, it matters. We are a great gym. I mean, is there any, any chip on the shoulder for you guys? Uh, for me, there's a couple things. I am very prideful of my team, and I'm very thankful for my team. And I'm going to say this right now, and it has never been different. Coach Winklejohn and Coach Jackson are the most loyal, good coaches out there. They genuinely want you to win. They genuinely will be there when you need them to be there, and they want you to win. They've always been there. I have never had an issue. Coach, I need to work on this. What time? There is never, and they are so much wanting you to succeed, and that is why this team has been built just off of passion and hard work. There's no big business money people behind our gym. None. You see a lot of these other big MMA gyms out there and they have all this help and this like backup from a lot of these like sponsors and people with money. And our gym has been built off of passion and hard work and love for the sport. And that comes from the top and that comes from Coach Winklejohn and Coach Jackson. And so anytime there's emotional things going on with the fighters, I will tell you right now that that is none of it. Their skill level of our coaches is the best in the world and the passion and genuine want for you to succeed that's number one money's last there's no way our gym would be built the way it's built if money was number one and so whatever people are happening i'm not here to talk trash about others but i am going to say that is 100 percent you can come into the gym and that is 100 percent how it's been and i have been part of this team longer than anybody on our team anyone so I've seen it from start to finish. I've witnessed it from start to finish. And that is why we have the team that we have, and it's built off of, you know, they had their separate gyms before. And Greg's guys would come up to Mr. Wingle John's sparring classes, and, you know, if you wanted to get into MMA, you could go. So they kind of had this, like, agreement, like, my guys can go spar with you, and your guys can come down here and, and train with me. And that's how it started, and then they combined. And it was just off of a, a sharing of passion, you know, and it was never like, well, I have five guys going up there and you have ten coming down here or whatever. It was like, let's make this happen. This is a, this is a, a, a great sport and a passion we have that we share. And let's just make it to the top and then the two greatest minds of it come together and that's where you get Jackson Wink. 
passion is evident. So I wonder, I mean, this, this weekend you want to win the fight for yourself, but is there a big party that just wants to win it for them? Absolutely, I want to win it for them because they believe in me. It doesn't matter what the outside world thinks, I can walk into the gym and I always tell people that's where I feel the most normal. There's been the knockout I had in boxing where everybody told me I should retire, what am I thinking of taking the rematch, and I walk in the, and all this negativity of everybody asking me outside, and, I, and it almost gets like in your head, and then you walk in the gym and they were like, hey, when are we going to start working so we can take this seat fight, and it's like, oh, thank you. They know, they get it, and their belief in you gives you strength, and that is one thing that... Um, they want you to put in the hard work, they're not going to let you cut corners. And they're also going to believe in you honestly and legitimately. They're not going to tell you they think you can do it just to, you know, blow hot air. They genuinely believe it, and with that belief, they want to help you achieve it. And so they're going to put the hard work into it. They know it's not going to just happen overnight, and it's not going to be easy. Yes, you can do this, but you got to do it right. And, you know, that's why you see multiple champions coming out of the team. You know, we're, we've got people from there that people, I, they, they look at, you know, John being the champion now, and then, you know, I beat Ronda, but it's like Rashad Evans was there and he got the belt when he was with us. Keith Jardine was there, you know, getting knockouts over some of the greatest. Like, you know, um, it's just, uh, you know, John Dodson was up for the, the belt twice. And the first one was very controversial. A lot of people thought John should have won. Uh, Carlos Condit. He had the interim, you know, title. Like you look at, you look at the team, and it's not just right now. It's been over the time, and that doesn't happen just because. That comes from the coaches. All right, that was Holly Holm, of course, still part of Jackson Wink MMA, so probably not surprising to hear her defending the team. But Simon, I know you were standing there, and uh, man, I, I, I felt like she was almost kind of getting a little lump in her throat at one point, you know, fighting back a tear or two. It was, uh, it was interesting to see the passion that she has. Yeah, and I think she made the point during the, uh, during, during what, you know, what she was saying there was she's been there longer than virtually everybody. Uh, so she's seen people come, she's seen people go, and she's saying everything's been the same all the way through. And the thing I really liked was, and it was kind of a thinly veiled dig at some of the other gyms out there that might be uh, funded by supplement companies and, and yep. stuff like that. She was like, we, you know, this gym wasn't created to make money. You know, it was sort of generated to create champions, and yep. uh, it's it's proved its worth in that regard. You know, so uh, no, I, I I was super impressed. I mean, Holly's always been super classy anyway, but um, I thought I thought that was that was particularly impressive. No doubt. All right, let's talk about a clash that has been a little bit less classy, and that is Ben Askren versus Jorge Masvidal. Um, listen, uh, it's. You know, Askren likes to rile people up a little bit, and Jorge, uh, he doesn't mind to spit a little fire as well, you know, to, to hype things up a little bit. I do feel like, um, at least from Masvidal's part, there's a, uh, I don't know, a, a little bit of a genuine dislike, man. I, I don't feel like he talks trash just to talk trash. Ben, Ben, I think, is a, is a fantastic promoter, man. He, he understands, you know, kind of the pro wrestling angles and the gimmicks, and, and uh, he's incredibly quick-witted, you know, so he, and he's, he's calm under fire, you know. Uh, it's a different style than, than a Conor McGregor or something in terms of intensity, but in terms of just being quick-witted, and he's, he's, he's phenomenal. Um, but I really get the feeling like even with those two fantastic matchups that we just talked about, I think this might be the fight that most people are looking forward to. Yeah, this one could steal the show, right? Yep. It's, I think Ben Askren is a is a polarizing character. You know, I think a lot of people um, were of the view that this is a guy who's been out there winning titles everywhere else, but he's never done it on the big show. He's never right. done it on the really big stage, and that he'll get, he'll get found out when he gets to the UFC. But he's all right. He's only one fight in, and that was a hell of a fight he had. Yes. But Robbie Lawler, and he was in big trouble in that fight, and he came through and won. Right, so there's that, but. He's a fantastic, as you say, he's a great promoter, and he he does it without really sl without really abusing people. Right. He just says what he thinks. I just yep. think there's no filter there. You ask him a question, and boom, he'll give you loads and loads of. He'll just basically dump a load of information on you. Um, and a lot of what he says does make a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, and Masvidal, who has always been very real, you know, I think that's real is a very good word to to use to describe him. Um, you get you get what you see with him, and if he says he doesn't like you, then he doesn't like you. Yep. You know, he's not doing it for show. He's not doing it for any other reason. It's because he doesn't like you, and uh, 
he doesn't like Ben Askren very much. Right. Um, I interviewed uh, I interviewed George today, and he he gave he gave us some absolute gold. And yeah, he he, he just they're gonna get it on because they don't get along, as I used to say, <laughs> right? And and it's gonna be it's gonna be a great fight. And you've got this situation where you've got Masvidal, who is pretty good everywhere. You know, he's got solid wrestling. He's got good jiu-jitsu. He's a slick striker. Um, and you've got Ben Askren, who is basically a specialist. Right. Um, and it's, in many ways, it's kind of similar to when Gago Masossi fought uh, Rafael Lovato Jr. in Bellator London. It was You've got a well-rounded guy who's pretty good everywhere against a pure specialist. Right. The specialist won that night. That's right. Will the specialist win this weekend? I don't know. But... Um, yeah, Masvidal was at pains to say, look, just because I'm on the floor, if I end up on the floor, that doesn't mean my office disappears. I can still hit him on the floor. Right. I can still scramble and get back to my feet. And I've been on the mat with Damian Meyer. So, and Damian Meyer's a hell of a lot better at submitting people than Ben Askren is. So, so yeah, but I think Masvidal's stock has never been higher. He's been doing this for so long. That was but such it, a star-making performance last time. His I whole fight week in London seemed to really push him over the, over the top and the fans really bought in. And to go in... To go into enemy territory, get a huge knockout win against a local a local guy, and still have so much love from the fans. He also then beat up another British fighter after the fight, um, and and he still got loads. I mean, like the British fans do love uh, George Masvidal. So it's as I said to him, your stock has never been higher. And he just sort of looked at me and said, "Yeah, it's only been 16 years, <laughs> right?" <laughs> You know, he's he's finally getting some recognition, and uh, he thinks he should have been given a title shot straight after that Till fight. Um, but he thinks he thinks that a lot, a lot of talent at the top of the division. Yeah, he thinks if he beats Askren, then uh, you know there isn't really a lot else to stop him. Well, so. and Askren sure, certainly believes you know that uh, that he's deserving a title shot if he wins as well. And listen, Askren did call it. He's like, listen, Covington's not getting this title shot. It's not coming together. And sure enough, man, he called it. Covington's now fighting Robbie Lawler, of course. Uh, so. Who knows, man? Ben Askren could jump to the front line. I, I did pick Ben Askren in this fight. As you said, the specialist, I feel like he's so good at what he does. Um, man, the way he kept moving forward after he got tagged his last time out, that was that was crazy. That showed me a lot. So, yeah. uh, But, like you said, Mazidal is, is, uh, is in peak condition right now, and he seems fired up to uh, to embarrass this guy. Said he wants to said he wants to hurt him. Super fired up. And you could see the point where it almost looked like he was under uh, Ben's skin. Like Ben's kind of the guy like uh, – Cowboy, he's like, I want to joke, but I want you to acknowledge that we're we're still kind of cool. We're just fighting or whatever. Like the today, the whole like, why are you mad? Why are you mad? Like, I felt like a part of that was uh, him sort of trying to like get himself into it because I th- I feel like he's he would need some interaction to keep him you know sort of at a certain level right. because I think if it's questionable, he gets a little outside of his head as well. Um, I actually had Askren as well, but then after seeing this week. Uh, the way that George has been, I just swapped. I Did just, you really? I just sent my email off uh, to Maddie yesterday. I was like, dude, and my reasoning, because we're, we're supposed to uh, put our reasoning as to why we changed, and I just said, George looks meaner this week. <laughs> <laughs> he he's, is, pretty, uh, he's pretty mean when we chatted to him today. Right? Yeah, he was. He, and he, he looks super, uh, I'm, I don't know, it's weird. He just looks happier and healthier. He looks full. He looks thick. Right. I mean, like. We've seen in the past where it's like, you know, I mean, there, we're, there's still a little bit of time out from, from when he has to actually weigh in or whatever. But I was just like, man, he looks big. He looks healthy. He's pissed off. But he's not pissed off because he's not emotional. Right. He's just, I want to, he realizes what he's good at and what he's not going to sugarcoat it anymore. And he's not going to just BS for whatever. Like, he's just going to say how it is. And I love how he just shoots it straight. And now he's find a guy that he wants to hurt you know and i just feel like that's a, a dangerous combination because i think george right now is striking probably better than we've seen him strike in the past well it's interesting in the, in, in the lead up to this he did not come to the media day in los angeles last monday which yeah he I was kinda, supposed to be there huh? i kind of don't blame him. yeah they said they said that he, apparently the word was he got ill yeah. I don't. I don't know if he ever intended. Well, on we've either. seen other logistical problems there yeah, in LA. Yeah, you know, <laughs> scheduling conflicts. See, yeah, yeah, I don't bl- scheduling conflicts. That's, that's it. It wasn't logistical. I don't. Conflicts. I don't blame him. I mean, you know, you're all the way down in Florida. It's a week before the fight. You don't want to break camp. But yeah, that's that's some BS. I think to be honest, yeah. he just didn't want to like have to deal with it. And, and he really shouldn't have to. I mean, that far out. I mean, I get what the UFC is trying to do, but if you have something that if if the travel is coming near to two thousand miles the week before when they're in the middle of their final strategies and weight shit. Like, 
that's poo poo on the UFC right. for trying to do that. That's it's way too close. They they shouldn't ask somebody to travel all the way across the UFC. I uh, agree. I, so I didn't blame for, him for, for that. Like I was that. like, you know what, man, if he wants to stay, stay out, that's fine. But it was interesting. Yeah. Then he came to open workouts yesterday, and we were told by PR, FYI. Masvidal is not taking any questions from the media. Right. He's just going to go to the fans. And then even when he got on the mic, he even said, I better not see no damn media get in there. Yeah. I'm shutting it down. Or I thought the fans did great yesterday. Oh, the fans did great. But I, th- I just thought, I thought it was the interesting questions strategy. Were awesome. I feel like maybe he's kind of insulated himself so he hasn't had to talk about him. You talk about yeah. him being meaner this week or whatever. Like, yeah. I feel like maybe he's insulated. It's like, I do not want to do these stupid interviews and talk about this stupid Ben Askren any longer yeah. than I had to. And today was the day he finally had to. Well, I got the impression yeah. he was enjoying it as well today. He wasn't, you know, sometimes you interview someone and they're talking to you and they come across like angry, like right. really sort of bubbling under angry. I think Masvidal was almost having fun. Right. Like he was, yeah. he was taking shots. I mean, I think we've got the audio in yep. a bit, but the, I won't, I won't spoil it. You just have a listen. There's, there's, there's various little nuggets he drops in there that they're pretty good. You All know, right. they're pretty good. We've teed it up. Let's not, let's not delay it anymore. You did get a chance to, uh, to speak to Mr. Masvidal earlier today. And uh, we'll, we'll let everybody hear that now. George, last time we spoke was in was in London, England. You went in there and uh, you got the job done. You beat you beat two British guys that weekend, right? So I mean, looking back on that, I mean, how satisfying was that to come out of there with with your stocks so high? It was awesome. Um, man, Till's a hell of a competitor, you know. So since the fight got announced, I was excited because I knew it was going to be that type of fight that everybody would be pumped about. Was nobody on their phone when we were fighting? And the fans know it. They know what I bring to the table, so it was definitely fun, you know. The other part happened because some guy tried to steal my shine, some hooligan, jealous individual. And that wasn't part of the script, but ain't nobody punking me, man. And you got yourself another crowd-pleasing fight. This is one that everyone's really amped for. What is it about Ben Askren that really, really winds you up and rubs you up the wrong way? No more stakes. He's just a pompous fuck. I can't stand him, you know. There's no hate because I don't hate nobody, but... I just don't care for the dude in this life or the next. He's not my cup of tea, man. As a martial artist, mixed martial artist, how do you how do you rate him? Obviously, his wrestling is his standout attribute, but how do you rate the rest of his game? I, I couldn't even answer that question, bro. I don't know what... I, besides putting his face in somebody's crotch, another man's crotch, I don't know what else he fucking does, man. Honestly, I, I don't know, man. I can't think of him... I don't even think he gets spell punch, you know? And in terms of the fight itself, I guess the secret is just stay standing, throw strikes. Is, that, is it as simple as that? It's just beat his ass up wherever the fight goes. Because if I'm on my back, I can still punch. I can still scramble to get back up to my feet. So the fight going to the floor, it's not over. When I went to the floor with Maya, it wasn't over, you know? And Maya's a much better submission individual than, than this guy will ever be, you know? So it's just beat his ass up through and through. With the, with the fight in London and then obviously the fight that we've got here this weekend, it feels like you've never been more popular. The fans have never been more switched on to you and your, and your career. Is that... It took 16 years. Well, that's what I was going to say. You, you've been there or thereabouts all this time, but it seems like now you've really got over. I mean, is that something that you particularly appreciate and that you think is a long time coming? Uh, definitely appreciate it because that means my paychecks will be getting significantly bigger. And that's what I love. But, uh, man, I mean, I've been good fighting for a long time and I can talk in front of the cameras it's just maybe I'm not the hungriest or thirstiest to get in front of the camera and always talk like like for example that individual that I'm fighting he calls reporters and stuff to get interviews and he goes out of his way and he offers lunch and maybe even sexual favors I don't know man but he does whatever he can to get an interview and I know these guys they're, they're some of them are friends of mine I consider and they'll send me texts like, look, look at the message that this guy wrote me just to be on my show, you know. And it's just, it shows how pathetic he is, man, you know. You get your hand raised on Saturday night. What's, what's the next step? What's the call out for you next? Oh, it's no call out. It's, it's, I'm on that surfboard and that wave is taking me right to the title shot. There's no other way around it. I think I should have been fighting for the title after Till, you know. Till's never been stopped in his career. Who did that in his hometown? Me, you know. When nobody wanted to fight the guy, I went and did it. Why, why didn't I get the title fight then? Because I didn't have that huge buzz, you know, but now there's no denying it, you know? I know you're good friends with Colby. You're both in the same division. You're both right up there in the division. If the UFC sat you down and said, we want you two to fight, 
is that a fight you would entertain? I know some teammates are happy to put things to one side and you know yeah. get in there, and some people really don't want to do that. What, what's if your take? Belt, if the belt is on the line, it's going to happen because if the belt's on the line, it doesn't matter who has it. I, I didn't get into the sport the high five with no dudes. You know, it's not my fucking thing, man. I got in here to fight, to win, and when I had kids. The goal was simple. I'm gonna use my talents that God gave me. I'm gonna develop them better and provide for my kids the best life that I possibly can. So it's not a human being walking this planet that if they have the title, I wouldn't try to diminish them to finish them, you know? I mean, you know Colby's a fighter. Is that a fight that you anticipate taking place down the line because of his trajectory and your trajectory in the same division? Well, mathematically, it would just sound like we're gonna end up doing it, you know? Is it somebody that I wanna punch in the face, knee in the ribs, kick in the neck? No, not really. We spent a lot of time training together. We had a lot of similar interests. We both uh, used to like poker a lot, used to train all day and chase women. So it was like pretty easy for us for, to, for us to get along. So um, I don't know. It's just uh, not somebody I want to punch in the face, you know. But like I said, when that belt's on the line, it don't matter who it is, man. All right, there he was, Jorge Masvidal. What was your favorite nugget out of there? He had some good ones. He had some gems. Oh, I, 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 don't, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, accusing, accusing Askren of offering media members sexual, <laughs> sexual favors to go on people's podcasts. By is the wild. way, it hasn't happened to me. I'll, I'll I about say, I've, I've had no such phone call. I just want that on record. Um, he, yeah. is, he is going with the. Uh, but that doesn't I, mean should he ever be on this podcast that we will have <laughs> had accepted anything. Yeah, that needs to be laid out. Uh, very yeah, clear. let's just clarify that right now. He's coming on out of the goodness of his heart. Uh, he's <laughs> using the, uh, and I, I guess it's kind of a, you know. A, a bait thing or whatever he's using the uh, he won't say he's trying to wrestle. He's trying to put his face in his crotch, right? Yeah, that's yeah, all yeah. Does. That's put, that's put, my that's my favorite put, put part. Face. That's, <laughs> that's, he's put I, face I, in so another man's crotch. So I think funny. I think my favorite <laughs> bit was I think I just asked him. I said, as a martial artist, obviously we know all about Ben's wrestling. What do you make of the rest the rest of his MMA game? And you'll have to <laughs> see it on crickets. Yeah, yeah, you'll have to see it on the video because like the you, facial the facial. He just basically looks down the lens of Kenny's camera and is like shrugs I think the eyebrows might go up at one point it's probably about eight or nine seconds of just dead air and then he goes I don't even know how to answer that bro <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like you literally stumped him <laughs> that's fun he's in peak form like I said that's the first time we really had to talk to him so uh, it's a good fight man I can tell you just as a website operator behind the scenes the numbers that's what people are clicking on right now man so uh, that could be a show stealer it's a big fight at welterweight could could somebody steal Kobe Covington's shot who knows? We're, we're going to find out. Uh, Jan Blachowicz versus Luke Rockhold. Not capturing the attention quite as much. I think it's, I think it's kind of a weird fight, right? I mean, it's and it's no disrespect to Jan. He's a tough guy, and he's a nice guy. I, I, ne it, I never see anybody around him at media days. You know what I mean? It's like they just, you know, it, it doesn't even matter if you're in Europe. I just feel like he doesn't I get always seek him out. He, he, he was very short with me today. I don't know why. Like, normally, we, I have a good chat with him. He was a little bit short today, but, but he's... He he thinks he's. I've actually picked Yan to win this weekend. Oh, okay, um, okay. And I thought I'd be an outlier. I I, I did as well. I've looked oh. at. There's a handful of guys on but the junkie kind of stuff. After we started reminiscing about how his last slot was lost, I was like, oh shit, that's right. He got knocked out. <laughs> <laughs> but I think. But I still think he can do it. Yeah, I I, I Yan is like ludicrously tough. And, he is. And well, I like Luke at 205, man. Like, five, dude, he's always been a 205. Just, like just refuse to refuse to admit it. Yeah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I, it, it's an inter it's an interesting <laughs> fight because it's like a gateway fight, isn't it? Like if Luke beats Yan, then he's he's straight in the top five. No, right. no, no question. Because that's kind of where Yan is sitting right now. So if like Yan and I, I asked him this, like, had he beaten Tiago Santos? There's an argument. It might have been him in the main event this weekend, right? Probably not because of the way the, the matchmaking sometimes works. The international right. fight week, they might have put a different fight on. But in theory, at least, you know, the winner of that past fight has ended up in the main event. He's now facing Luke Rockhold. So, um, but yeah, I, I, I'm i interested. The thing that always gets me, and I, I mentioned it to you before we even started recording, is despite the fact that Luke has been knocked out really badly twice now, that man has n lost not one ounce of confidence. No. He is the most confident man I've ever seen in the sport of mixed martial arts. Now, I'm not saying it's misplaced because the guy is good. Right. Right? But you'd think that when you've been starched twice, you might, 
you might have as like a, a a little bit of sort of uh reservation when it comes to sort of strutting about the place yeah. telling everyone you're going to just yeah. smoke everyone but no that's not that's not how Luke rolls right and I and felt like at their face off today I, I felt like the face off I felt like Luke was almost like dismissive it was almost like there was a little smirk or something it that's was, what that's what he does yeah that's what he does you know like like he looks like a superior being anyway doesn't he let's be honest um yeah and and when he's on his game he fights like one as well and the only thing that, that's really counted against him uh, in the fights he's lost, in some cases it's been it's been overconfidence. Right. That was definitely the case against Michael Bisbing. Right. Um, definitely. And but he has also shown a slight a slight um, issue with being caught with clean shots. Like he has shown that he can be hurt. So, and Yan and is John, a heavy he Yan, Yan is Yan is a heavy handed guy and he's very compact. Um, and I don't. And he's learned to keep his hands up. <laughs> he's he's learned to keep his hands up. <laughs> Supposedly. Yeah. What did you learn from the Tiago fight? I learned they hold my hands higher now. <laughs> right. So. <laughs> Good sport about it. So Good yeah, no, no. It. He thought that was all. He, he, he sort of made Let's a joke. About I think it. I think Tiago hits harder than Luke. So I think. Yes. I, yes. I mean, like he got caught, but I mean, like I don't think Luke is going to hurt him as much as the the problem of what Tiago. Unless he can throw those kicks, kicks to the body, yeah, I the think. Kicks, the, I don't, I don't, I don't think he used to, and yeah. I think at two hundred five, like he used to, like yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a big question mark. Dude has stepped away I mean, for a while. I mean, like for him to come in, and this is they're not giving him an easy like, hey, welcome back to the fold. You're stepping up. They're like they're literally giving him a dude that, like as you said, could have been two fights away from a mm. title shot. So. This could be a, a bad welcome back for him. Jeez, now you, you got know. to second guess myself. Because you're, I mean, you're, Luke, you're, you're right. Luke, when Luke was on his heyday, Luke, I I think anybody would be like, oh, yeah, Luke, no problem, yeah, yeah. no problem, no problem. But then you start seeing the possibility of, of, of you saw the losses happen, and then he became human. you know. And then the fact that you know he's dealt with certain things and he's been, he's been away for a while, and we haven't really seen him to kind of remind us how good he is. So we always draw right back to, oh, I remember him, him in his heyday. But it's like... We, I don't know. I, that's the question mark for me when I saw it. I guess I was still leaning on the on the, the fact of that Jan still right now is fighting at a really high level, yep. and he has had no break. And he's had – you know, granted, it's always tough to uh, gauge a performance on – like just at a knockout because he was caught and then the, the fight was over. It wasn't like he was being dominated no. a whole particular fight and then you're like, oh, okay, man, maybe he's just not at just the top level. Anymore, but yeah. like Jan right now is fighting as good as anybody. You well, know, if anything, his trajectory is going upwards. And I I'm going to tell right you what, what you said that I hadn't really thought about is I don't think Luke loves this fight. I think he wanted a bigger fight. I'm you surprised know, he, he took it. Yeah, and so – if he he's might going be in there him. thinking like exactly. If he's going in there thinking, man, this dude is not, not on my, my level. level. What am I doing? Yeah, That's which the could I mean, which could That's happen. I mean, like we've seen a lot of guys once they've been knocked out. There's a, a certain uh, confidence. I think it's tough. I think the really good ones are able to just immediately forget that past thing right. and they move forward. But you know, I think there is probably something to say that that always does linger. Is is your confidence as high as it always is, or is there going to be a shot that you take that during the fight where you're like, oh shoot, this is like what it felt before that last one? And then they start getting in the head, and then they get out of the fight because if you're if you're against somebody that's you know at the top level, you can't have that moment to to get up in your head. You got to stay present at that moment. So who knows? But I don't think Luke is that guy. That's what he used to be right at that point. The other thing to really do it. So we'll see. So I'm, I kind of feel confident in this point, but I'm sticking with Luke, you know, I like the points you're making. They're scaring I mean, me Jan a little is, bit. The other thing, Yan, Yan is a proper 205. Yan. Yes. Yan is a Jan. big 205. <laughs> and, and he, he's he, thick. And he punches like a big 205. So he's going to hit harder yeah, than any, he's going to hit harder than he's anybody who's shoulders. hit Luke so far. I was looking at his shoulders today because I think I have big shoulders, but I was looking, I was like, dude's got shoulders. No, he's a unit. He's a unit. But, um, you know, the fight. Units. Yeah. The fight. You just want to put a man and put his head in your crotch, don't you? <laughs> wow. Okay. Maybe that's where my head. You say you. I don't want to. Don't, don't say that's where your head's at. <laughs> don't say that. that. You're painting images for the listeners crotch. that people don't want. But um, <laughs> <laughs> what was I going to say? The fight. The fight that I think will eventually be there will be Rockhold and Wyburn at 205 because Wyburn's moving up as well soon. So yeah. I think... Um, they have history. Eventually, those two are going to have to do that again. Uh, and who two knows? all-American, good-looking white boys that just want to slam, slam on each other. Like, <laughs> why don't we <laughs> violence? Wow. wow. I'm not getting like... 
I'm not talking like sexual. No I'm just like you just want to like fucking go at it. Like welcome. I feel like that that fight's a fight that people have been talking about for a long time. Yeah. Of two guys that I mean, like when you look at them, I mean, like they're about as clean cut white bread as you get, you know, and like just. It's weird to think that eventually you know that the trajectory would just take – because only one can exist in the universe. There's only one of them that can exist. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the MMA it's been, it's Innuendo Roadshow, by the way. It's been a good run of 223 <laughs> straight weeks for the MMA Roadshow, but cold coffee has gone off the deep end. <laughs> <laughs> so we may have to retire. All right. Look, in order that cold coffee will not say anything ridiculous again, let's just do this. I had a chance to speak to Luke Rockhold, just spent a few minutes with him today, and, uh, and here's what he had to say. Well, Luke, let's get into it, man. Thursday of a fight week is normally not a good day for you. Uh, how much different is it here – 205 pounds it's comfortable it's good you know I think it's it's what it's, it's all about it's beg- I get to focus on fighting and not cutting weight and so um, that's what I'm here for to fight no doubt. talk about the lead of itself when people you know make these weight changes we always say okay you don't have to cut weight but is the preparation different I mean has training been different has, has there been you know impacts there as well not just this last weight cut yeah it's allowed me to go back to more of my style of who I am and that's hunting people that's what I do best I gotta hunt you I'm not you know that I have everything in my arsenal to take you out and so having that in the back of your head I'm gonna come forward I'm gonna grab you I'm gonna throw you around and and if you you gotta be wary of that and at the same time I'll kick you in the head I'm gonna crack you in the, in the face I got I got a, all the tools to put you out in any realm but I need to I need to go forward and I need to push people I need to be on the hunt I think everybody's expecting you to do really well in this weight class. I mean, do you feel, I don't say pressure, I mean, you always got to perform, but I mean, do you feel like this is almost an, an audition or something, some start of a new chapter? I'm going to take it for what it is. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to have some fun with it. You know, this is, it makes, kind of brings back that, that old life to me. You know, that old Strike Force Challengers kind of feel where it's, you know, everything's easy. Everything's, you know, I'm hungrier, I'm happier, and I'm ready to fight. Talk about the matchup itself with Jan. I mean, it, Maybe not the sexiest of matchups to get for your first name, but what, what do you think about it? He's a top-ranked guy, and that's all that matters. You know, I'm going to come in and make a statement on one of the top guys in the division, and uh, that's that's all it is. You know, there's not many people that want to fight me right now in this division, so I'm going to take it for what it is. Power a concern? I mean, moving up a weight class, I think that's what people always worry about. You know, will the power be an issue? Is it? Is that a concern for you? Is he more powerful in D.C.? I wouldn't think so. I don't think so. I've been training with DC for pretty much my whole career, being a sparring partner. So power is not going to be an issue. I'm bigger and stronger than I've ever been when I was in that state training with him. So a guy like Jan Blockwitz, I, you know, I know he's stronger, whatever. I'm stronger. I put the weight on. I'm, I'm here. I'm faster. I'm better in every way. So I'm, I'm going to beat him to the shot everywhere, and I'm gonna, it's going to feel that extra bit. Nice. Give me the idea with a win here. I mean, I know you got to focus on that, but, I mean, you're a name, right? You're a former champion. I mean, is John Jones, I mean, do you feel like you have an inside track to a title shot, or is it going to take work to get to that point? Take a look at the division. I'm, I'm one of the top guys in the world wherever I go. And it takes one fight to go prove that. So let's go prove that. Yeah. People are excited for this one. When you play it out in your head, what are you thinking? You're going to get something done in quick, vicious fashion? You're going to have to grind this out? What, how's this fight going to go? I don't see a grind. I don't see a grind. I see a finish. I see a finish early and often. You think John Jones is next? I think big things. I think big things. That's all I think about. I'm not here for anything small. Just the big stuff. Well, as Simon said, no uh, no lack of confidence there in Luke Rockhold, and he is uh, aiming for the top, aiming for big things. All right, final main card fight, Michael Chiesa versus Diego Sanchez. I mean, just – I'm intrigued by this fight, man. I don't know how you can't – I mean, you're a fan. I, I, I understand why people want to hate on Diego Sanchez, and he is one – unique individual unfortunately we didn't get to talk to him today because some other outlets tied him up for 20 to 25 minutes but we won't get into that too much we won't get into that too much uh but listen michael chiesa to me i think is is the pick here it's who i went with um man how much different is he at 170 i mean we're talking about these weight changes i mean he used to be 
death warmed over on on media day, and now he's he's up, he's lively, he's he's having a good time, you know. And and I think his performances show it, and and uh, I think he's going to be a lot for Diego Sanchez. But I will say, I mean, Diego Sanchez is going into the USC Hall of Fame on Friday night for a fight from ten years ago. I understand he's actually going to go to the awards and be there, and so even though it's the night before the fight, he's going to you know uh, be a part of the ceremony, and then he's going to be on the main card of International Fight Week. I mean, Diego is a warrior, man, and he is a legend, and I know it's easy to make him a uh, uh, a punching bag for, for insults sometimes or whatever, but I uh, I just think he's such a unique character, and I would not count him out, out of any fight. Uh, the dude comes into scrap every single time, um, but I did go with Michael Chiesa here. Yeah, I, I, I picked Chiesa as well, and what what I'll say now is to uh, whoever's producing the uh, the award show, the Hall of Fame show. <laughs> Diego Sanchez, cue, cue the li- exit music right <laughs> from the get go. Diego Sanchez, you're basically because he's going up to to collect an award, you're gonna overrun, right? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah. Because if what we saw from him on media day today is anything to go by. Uh, then, I didn't even think about that. Then That's that show be ridiculous. that show is going to overrun by quite quite some distance because once he started, he, the oh, stuff he, the stuff he was coming out with was just like bonkers. He pulled a little mirror cube out of his pocket at one point and started saying, "I think I'd save the bucks." And he's like, "My ex-wife tried to keep me in this box, but I'm not doing that anymore." And, so and it's uh, and, uh, like, I, like I, I was desperate desperate to talk to him because I was just going to try and completely break him out of character and right. say so Diego are you enjoying yourself this week and just see if he sort of suddenly woke up and sort of said something different but yeah he's like intensity doesn't even cover it does it it's but amazing. he's been there seen it done it he's a history maker in the UFC he's a he's the, he's the first man you know people can win titles they can win ultimate fighter seasons only one person can ever be the first to do something you know, you probably can't name all the people who've walked on the moon, but you know Neil Armstrong, right? right. So he's the Neil Armstrong of the Ultimate Fighter, right? Because he was the first cool. guy. He was the first guy. Way to say it. And and he he deserves legendary status just for that. I and agree. his career's gone on. He's been counted out many many years ago, really. And he seems to have found his sweet spot again. He's gone back up to 170, which I think was a very a very shrewd move. Yep. He's fighting healthily. Um, and in, from 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 a weight perspective, um, and he's been he's been good in his last few performances. But Chiesa, as you said, I mean, how relaxed was he? I mean, he was standing there with a cup of coffee, laughing and joking and chatting away. We saw him during the week at the PI, didn't we? And he yep. was he was exactly the same then. Um, he knows what he's in for. He knows he's got a, an intense opponent on fight night. But he he <laughs> seems to me in the intense. best. Intense. <laughs> he's in the best place in his career, Michael Chiesa, and and. Provided he can avoid being basically laid on for twenty, uh, sorry for fifteen minutes, then I think he's got the skills to win the fight inside the distance. Look, but we'll I, see. I, I I have a lot of reverence for Diego, man. Yeah. I'm I'm a big fan of him as a human being and as a fighter. But I do believe, and he's looked good mm. against Craig White and against Mickey Gall. Correct. And I don't mean disrespect to those guys, but I do believe Kiesa is on a little bit different level than oh, those two guys. Just a bit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Kiesa's so legit. I think this is a tough matchup. That said. I said if 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 it's a test of heart or a test you know if this something comes into some kind of test of will in there that's it, it. Diego's not going to wilt yeah when it comes to self belief and if self belief can literally move mountains like Diego and what he feels he can do and the way he's feel he's tapped into something in his mind right now I feel like he thinks he could stand in front of a Mack truck and the Mack truck would would move yeah. before he did <laughs> and uh let's not try that Diego uh, <laughs> he's like I hadn't thought about that experiment <laughs> like it's a new 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 struggle. Um, I love the fact that he is <laughs> watching him walk onto the stage, and I tried to pan over, but we were so damn crowded on the fucking stage, I couldn't move because of the uh, – I don't want to say the outlet of the fucking dude next to me, so I couldn't pan over. <laughs> and are uh, burning bridges all day to day. <laughs> but this dude uh, – but when the, the way that Diego sort of just sort of like – I don't even know how you – what you call that, you know, just uh, – just – uh, just moving for the plotting for with prowl, which is prowling with yeah. malicious intent in his eyes. The way he came on there, and I thought Michael did such a great job of just sort of not one laughing, but also two. You could tell he wasn't intimidated, but I think part of him was just like had to be something inside him that was like, "This is awesome! Look at Diego! I'm fighting Diego!" And look at him come up on stage because that was probably one of the first I've seen Diego go up there uh, where he was just like. I mean, he always goes as up in some sort of like 
mode, but yeah. this was full on like snarling bulldog. Like if, yeah, if you guys ever watched Dragon Ball Z, it felt like in his mind he thought he was full on Super Slime. Saiyan. Yeah. Like hair was just glowing, and I love that about him because honestly, I thought Mickey was gonna beat him. I thought they're just. Yeah. I thought Diego's just too, too far out there. I, I think he's too. tapped too far into the cosmos, into the universe. But it's working for him, and and fuck, it's hard to. It's I don't think anybody would ever want or wish on Diego to lose. But unfortunately, I'm with you. I think Casey. I think what he's just longer. I think he when it comes to if it does get on the ground, I think ultimately his submission skills are going to come out, and I think that's what's going to get the win. Uh, Michael's not going to want to stand up and just let Diego throw because Diego literally would stand in front of a Mack truck and trade blows, and Michael's not the kind to do that. So if he tries to do that, that's going to be a bad mistake for him. But uh, I'm looking forward to this fight. It's I think it's going to be awesome. Main card. Two things, two things on that very quickly, like just little sort of uh, side notes. Number one, Diego Sanchez was walking around today telling people he was a Jedi. That's number one. Did he really? <laughs> yes, he was. Yes. He has tapped into the Force. No, no, no. I, he, I he believe is. it. He is. He is. <laughs> that he, is so yeah. awesome. No, no, no. He, he, was, he was standing there staring down a barrel of cameras going, I am a Jedi. And he was also saying, he was declaring, I do not have CTE because he's obviously he's hearing hear people people saying they're worried about that, which, right. you know, he was he was saying, I am absolutely fine, blah, blah, blah. But he was like, I am a Jedi. I can do this. I can do that. So, okay. The face-off, and you guys wouldn't have picked up on this, but I was stood right on the side of the stage where Chiesa walked on and walked off. I've got Uriah Faber right next to me filming on his phone, almost crying with laughter, right? And um, so, because <laughs> we could see uh, from where we're standing, basically Sanchez is walking towards us. Right. And he's so you're you know, seeing the snarl. The cheeks are puffing out, and the eyes are, you know, the veins by his eyes are bulging, and he's giving it all this. Chiesa just sort of strolls in there, faces off with him, walks off almost with his hands in his pockets, and as he's walking down the stage, Chiesa just sort of shrugs and goes, fucking dog. <laughs> <laughs> Too funny. All right, well, listen, Chiesa did have a lot of respect, but we talked before the face-off, so maybe that changed, <laughs> but I wanted to play a few minutes of Michael Chiesa because he, uh, he's, he admits, he's like, look, I like Diego Sanchez, I'm a fan of Diego Sanchez. Yeah. I will put that aside on Saturday night. Well, Mike, uh, it is visibly different how you feel, I think, at 170 pounds. G give me an idea just what the difference is like between this and lightweight. The difference is, is I can, I feel good right now. I think it's very important in hindsight. I think it's very important that you need to feel good on fight week. And just I spent so much of my career cutting to 55. And as I got older and got bigger, it just got harder. And, you know, that fucks with your – sorry, that messes with you physically and, and mentally. And so I, I think it's important to just be – just feel my best. This is how fight week should feel, you know what I mean? I'm still able to train, get good training work in, feel good. You know, I'm here, last media day, I was like, just like a zombie. I didn't want to talk to anybody, you know what I mean? I, it sapped my energy. I enjoy this. I love talking to the media. I like the face-offs. I like to do all this stuff. This is like, this is what it's all about for me. I enjoy the whole process, and it was just kind of sapping the life out of me. So, uh, yeah, this, is how, this is how it should feel. Why do you think it's so hard for guys to reach that point? I mean, is it a psychological thing that you just feel like you've got to have that size advantage? I mean, why is it so hard for people to realize, I shouldn't be doing this to myself? Well, not just in fighting, but in life, change is scary. You know, when you do something a certain way for so long, to make that adjustment, it's scary. And you start thinking about, like, these guys are going to be bigger, you know? It's like, it, you start thinking about those things, and then you got to remind yourself, like, what I reminded myself is, I can, I'm a good fighter. Like, yeah, I, I was I was a top-ranked lightweight. There's no reason why I can't go beat these guys. 10, 15 pounds shouldn't make a difference as to whether I'm good or not. But it was still scary to make that decision, kind of take that leap of faith. But I did, and I encourage more guys to do it. I think that it also depends on what era of fighting you started from. I started fighting in 2008, and that was pretty close to, like, that militage type era where it's, like, spar 10 five-minute rounds, fresh guy every minute you know, and then cut as much weight as you can to be as big as possible. And we've kind of evolved out of that era. Now it's about being, training smarter, being smarter. And, uh, you know, I, I, this was the best decision I've made in my whole career, for sure. So that last performance that you had, fantastic performance. I mean, how much of that do you attribute to being in the new division? Is it something else or is it that much simple, you know, that, hey, this new division made me this way? It, it, that's exactly what it was. It is the new division. It's like, if I was fighting Carlos Condit at 155 pounds, you know what I mean? And I sat, when you, when you cut that weight, at least for me, it, you know, as my weight gets lower, so does my confidence. And I'm fighting a guy that I put on a very high pedestal that I've been a fan of my whole life. You know what I mean? So as my weight gets lower, my confidence gets lower. But it's like, dude, when I don't have to cut a ton of weight, I feel good. 
you know, when you feel good, you fight good. So I attributed a lot of that to just to moving up the weight class. And it, it, it was the best decision I've made, man. And I think that my best performances are just, they're, they're coming. You know what I mean? I got I mean, to start on Saturday for sure. Yeah, all right, let's talk about that matchup on Saturday. Diego Sanchez, I mean, uh, a legend, right? I mean, what, what do you think about this guy? Where do you think he's still performing? What do you think about the fight itself? The ageless wonder, Diego Sanchez. <laughs> Dude, the guy's tough as nails. And just when we all counted him out, every media outlet has admitted it right to his face. Like, dude, we had you like down and out. And he's in, you know what? He's the ageless wonder, dude. He's won his last two fights. He looked like his old self, mauling guys on top. Just that old Diego Sanchez that we've we've known to grow and love. You know, he looked like that vintage Diego that beat Kenny Florian on the Ultimate Fighter season one. So I'm excited for the challenges he presents. And, uh, you know, it's Ultimate Fighter versus Ultimate Fighter. And I, I've only got to do that once in my career, and that was against Colt Smith. And these opportunities don't come very often. So I'm really excited to fight another Ultimate Fighter champion. And it's the Ultimate Fighter champion. It's the guy, you know what I mean? And he's still relevant. He's still tough. You know, he poses a lot of threats to me. And, and you know, I'm excited to test myself against him. I know you're going to go in there as a fight, but I know you're a fan of the sport, too. I mean, are you a fan of the guy? Can you admit that? 100%. And why, how could I not? How could anybody not be a fan? He's a wild man. He's a wild man. He's put on some of the best fights we've ever seen. I mean, we could sit down and name. I mean, the Mark Cameron fight was one of the best come from behind victories I've ever seen in my life. You know, the guy, he's a true fighter. You know what I mean? But that doesn't mean that I can put that aside for 15 minutes or less and go out there and get the job done. I did it against Carlos Condit. I have no problem doing that, doing that against Diego Sanchez. Um, I'm excited. What do you think this does for you? I mean, you're starting over, right? I mean, you kind of have to build back up. I mean, this is a super deep division, just like Lightweight was. So what do you think this win does for you? It's going to get me in the bottom of the top 15. You know, before I got this matchup, we were really, I, we thought we had a fight locked in against a ranked guy. Things didn't work out. Um, so, you know, so I think the UFC does want to push me into the rankings. And, you know, I just got to go make a statement. And that's not going to be that easy. I got a really tough Diego Sanchez who's rejuvenated, revitalized. You know, the toughest fighter is always the, the guy who's got the best mentality. You know, it's not the guy with the best stand-up, the best ground game, the best wrestling. That's not the most dangerous fighter. It's the guy whose best attribute is mental toughness and self-belief, and he has all of that. So I got a tall order ahead of me, but you know, I got to go get the job done. I got to go pitch a shutout, and hopefully by before the end of the year, I'll be fighting a ranked opponent. Nice. So when you play this one out in your head, what do you think? I mean, can you go in there and be dominant and finish the guy early, or are you ready for a 15-minute Diego Sanchez fight? I'm ready for whatever happens. You know what I mean? I had a really good camp. Training for Diego Sanchez is actually pretty tough because you know this guy. He's got relentless pace. He's got sick cardio, good top position. You know, he's going to stay in your face on the feet. So it was a challenging camp, but we covered all the bases. So whether I go in there and shut him down and dominate, or we got to go into a knockdown, drag out Diego Sanchez brawl, that's fine. He's won some fight of the nights. I've won some fight of the nights. There's no reason why we can't go out there and, you know, play blood and guts. But I'm really looking to just go in there and pitch a shutout. All right, Michael Chiesa and Diego Sanchez, that kicks off the main card. Fantastic main card. Listen, the prelim fights, uh, some fun names on here. Arnold Allen versus Gilbert Melendez. I mean, that's a young versus old generation right there, man. A lot of meaning in that. Uh, Gadelia Marcos is a good fight. I think Alejandro Perez versus Song Yadong is going to be fireworks. I think it's going to be a, a great fight. Uh, Jack Martian, Edmund Shabazzian, they had a uh, little bit of a face-off today. Yeah. Stylistically, the way they come together, that could be fun. Um, anything that stands out to you guys on, on these? Yeah, Ismail Nadiev is the guy you want to look out for. He's the Austrian Wonder Boy. That's his nickname. Um, he fights in the same division as the actual Wonder Boy. So who knows? Maybe one day. But um, he made his debut in Prague, mm -hmm. and I was there covering for Junkie. And he put on a superb performance to defeat Michel Prezeres, who's a tough, who tough is, out. Who is a really tough, tough campaigner. I think he was on like an eight-fight win streak or something going into that. And uh, Nadiev just basically dominated yep. him on the feet. Looked good on the mat as well. Scrambled his way out of trouble a few times against Prezeres. He's good on the mat. Um, but yeah, Nadiev, I think he's one to keep a, keep an eye on. He might work his way up the rankings soon. So definitely keep an eye on, on him. Something Should tells me sneakily that Cold Coffee is looking forward to Julia Villa versus Panikianza. I fucking love that fight. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was actually looking at that and, and Gadel and Marcos. I think uh, Claudia and Ronda, I think that's a, a fucking great fight. But yeah, I mean... 
I love Panning's hairstyle today. Is it wrong <laughs> for me to say that? I liked I liked what she was bringing. To. I thought she looked happy she had at some, first. She had I was like, sass. She had I was like, fire. who is that? And I was like, oh my god, it's new hair. But it was awesome. That's funny. But yeah, I'm I'm loving the women's fights actually. Uh, a lot of denim on this place. I think it's really good. Yeah, there's a lot, lot of denim in the Gadella the Gadella Marcos. Yeah, that was great. Well, it should be it should be a fun fight card. Uh, we will have it all covered for you. MMA Junkie Simon Head will be doing double duty that night, but he'll be helping us out. So uh, definitely stay tuned. We'll have it all covered there, of course, uh, all weekend long. In the meantime, we got to run. We get, we're, we're booked for a gig tonight. We're uh, <laughs> hard, 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 hard work. We got to head over to the uh, is right. to the strip club down the down the down the hall. And, uh, and uh, it's a little, tough. It's tough life. Do a little do a little commentating. So. Tough life. In the meantime, <laughs> you guys got to keep looking for that one. <laughs> In the meantime, thanks for listening. Thank you.